Star winning at the races with Daily Racing Form's new Mobile Pass performances, featuring exclusive buyer speed figures and expert analysis and selections. Go to DRF.com slash best and get the power of DRF in the palm of your hand. Hi, everybody. Dan Omen, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Saturday, September the 5th. It's a race we've been waiting for for a long, long time. It's the 2020 edition of the Grade 1 Kentucky Derby. It's finally here. Let's throw up the field. Three-year-olds obviously going a mile and a quarter under the Twin Spires at Churchill Downs. Carded as race number 14, you can download free Formulator Pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. Tis the law, three to five on the morning line favorite, and he has been just simply tremendous this year. He really has. Um, listen, he's he's been a good horse right from the start, Dan, but it does it almost feels like he's really taken it to a new level this summer. His last two races have been very, very good. Let's throw up the time form US pace projector for this year's derby. The 18 authentic expected to clear off from that far outside post and make the lead in a red bar fast pace scenario. I agree. I think authentic's gonna make the lead and call me crazy. I'm not sure he's going to have to go as fast as a lot of people think. I mean, I guess we'll see how it plays out. You're, you're very rarely get a slow pace in the Derby, Dan. There's 18 horses in here. Everybody's looking for, for position heading into that first turn. I do think Authentic will make the lead, but I'd be surprised if, you know, he got away too easy up there. Are you surprised that the 17, the horse to beat, the favorite, tis the law, is so far back on this pace projector? He usually breaks well out of the gate. I would assume Manny Franco and Barkley Tag want a similar trip as the Belmont, a similar trip as the Travers, that three-wide stalking trip in the second flight. I think they probably want him closer than that um, as well. And we'll see how fast the pace gets. I suppose if they really do run through the stretch that first time, maybe he will wind up a little further back, but I think he's going to be close. A horse that will be coming from off the pace is the number one Finnick the Fierce, who has only finished first once in his career, and that one is in his career debut. But he is grade one placed, and if you give him some pace, he's going to punch on late. It's a question of whether he's good enough. Seems like he's probably not good enough. Um, I thought his Arkansas Derby was actually okay three starts back. I thought he ran deceptively well, or maybe at least better than it looks in the bluegrass last time. I think it's hard for him to win in here, Dan, but I've seen worse 50-1 to shots. I know a horse that you're a fan of, and that's the two max player. And I think you can make some arguments that he was compromised a bit in his last two races. He ran well in both of them. Third behind Tis the Law in both the Belmont and the Travers. The Belmont was his first race off a little bit of a layoff. Maybe he was just a bit short. And last time out in the Travers, there just wasn't a lot of pace for him to run at. Well, he's getting plenty of pace this time in his important third start of the form cycle. And he's now with Steve Asmussen. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. This race looks like it may set up a little bit better for him. And I, I do think he has more improvement in him, Dan. He's run pretty well in both the Belmont and the Travers. He was no match for Tis the Law in either of those races, but he ran pretty well to be third both times. More pace in this race. Distance is no problem for him. I think he's going to take another step forward in here. He's hard for me to resist at the morning line price. Another late kicker that's going to get the right setup, perhaps, is the number three enforceable, a graded stakes winner this year for Mark Cassie. Finished third, fourth in the bluegrass last time out, finishing ahead of three of these horses. That was a good bluegrass. Art Collector won it. He came back to win the Ellis Park Derby with a 100 buyer speed figure. The Philly Swiss Skydiver was second. She came back and blew him away in the Alabama with a 102. Enforceable looks like he's slowly getting back into form. Maybe he is. I mean, he does have the layoff there from March to July. Um, so maybe he will be set to take another step forward here um, because so far it feels to me like as a three-year-old, he hasn't really developed all that much, but maybe that layoff um, is what's been holding him back. We'll see if he can do it then. He is a deep, deep closer. He needs tons of pace. Storm the court, conversely, he can get close to the pace. He's handy out of there, and he's trying to get back to the winner's circle for the first time since he pulled off that shocking upset in last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Juvenile, he ran fine on the turf last time out. Let's go back to his race in the Ohio Derby, where he finishes just behind South Bend. He is on the outside in the green, uh, with the green cap, black and green silks. You're going to see South Bend with a big run go by Storm the court, and this has kind of been Storm the court's three-year-old campaign, Mike, close but no cigar while lacking a little bit of explosion. 
Yeah, I mean, he, speaking of horses who haven't really improved, I mean, he just hasn't really improved yet as a three-year-old. It's questionable now whether he'll actually do it. I will say in that Ohio Derby that we just watched, he was wide every step of the way in there. You saw him there not finishing that strongly in the race. Um, that's a concern. He did have a little bit of an excuse there, though. And remember, the winner of that race also was a rail skimmer. So maybe that ground loss made a lot of difference in the Ohio Derby. Major Fed's the number five, eligible for a nominers of two life, but coming off a runner-up effort in the grade three Indiana Derby. Now, he got a setup in that race. Shared sense the winner came from off the pace. Major Fed came from off the pace. He still is yet to buy her 90 on the scale. Going to have to do a lot better than that to beat Tis the Law. Yeah, he's going to have to really take a step forward. I thought there was a chance he could do it. Not, I'm not saying he could win the race, but I, I think he could take another step forward here. Um, his Matt Wynn, he's another horse who just got caught crazy wide in that race. He had a tough trip in the Louisiana Derby before the layoff. There were things to like about this horse to at least consider using underneath, I think. King Guillermo makes his first start off a 126-day layoff. This is his last race, the Arkansas Derby, way back in early May. He's on the outside in the yellow silks, and he proved in this race that his prior effort, a 49-1 to shocking win in the Tampa Bay Derby, was no fluke because he makes a very talented horse, the ill-fated Nadal, run in the stretch. Yeah, I mean, he ran well in this race. Um, he's only second best at the end, but as you uh, mentioned there, Nadal was one of the better three-year-olds around at that point. This horse's Tampa Bay Derby was good. Um, his two turf races were good. He just seems like a horse has a lot of talent, and um, they, they're taking a risk here, his connections, by coming into this race off such a long layoff. Um, seems like he's training very strongly. We'll see if it works out for them. The delay in the timing of the Derby this year really works to the seven money moves his favor. He won his second lifetime start at the end of March at Gulfstream. He got sick after that race. He missed a lot of time and he showed up at Saratoga in this spot against older horses going a demanding mile and an eighth off the layoff. We see money moves on the outside. He has work to do. I think we give him extra credit off the layoff for really digging down and going after this horse and getting them. That being said, you have to question the quality of competition he was facing. Uh, true. I mean, he was facing older horses and the horse that beats him there. You saw them two on even terms there, sort of in mid stretch. That horse has really improved since he switched to dirt. And, I, you know, he started out with some talent as well. Um, so we'll see. I mean, that was his first start in a long time. First time around two turns. I thought he ran well. I thought his allowance win two back was actually good too. He worked really hard for that race and got it done. This horse has talent. They're just asking an awful lot of them in here. Asking an awful lot. He did do a lot to reel in that winner and then just got a little bit tired when out finished late. We saw South Bend rally in the Ohio Derby and then they tried him in the Travers. And similarly to Max Player, he just didn't get a lot of pace to run at that day. He's a horse, I think, with a limited amount of upside. He's already started 12 times, but he's a true one run closer that should be moving at the end. Yeah, they'll try and make one run with him in this race. That's what they did in the Travers. I actually felt like Jose Ortiz gave him his very best chance in there, Dan. He was last early, but he saved all the ground. He was able to get through on the inside in the stretch. Everything really worked out as far as a closer trip goes. He just wasn't good enough. 50 to 1 odds on the number nine, Mr. Big News, who got a big pace in the Oaklawn Stakes two starts back, and he flew home at a gigantic price. Perhaps he'll get a similar situation. He certainly will be a similar price in the Derby. His most recent start, the Bluegrass, there just wasn't a lot of closing going on in that race. He gets a better setup here. Yeah, his last two races kind of polar opposites. He had the fast pace two back, and he took advantage. He didn't get a lot of pace last time and couldn't really make an impact. I think there's still some question as to how good this horse actually is, but it'll be a big price. Thousand Words, the number 10, started off as one of Bob Baffert's better two-year-olds of last year. He won his first three starts, and then Authentic handled him in the San Felipe, and it appeared he went right off form. He came back in this race, the shared belief it was a short field. He got a great ride. He went right to the front. He's in the blue nose band, and this is a trademark of Thousand Words. He wants to beat you. He has Cezanne, who's lightly raced with a lot of upside on his outside beat. He's got Honor AP, a major contender in the Derby that might have been using this race as a prep coming late, but Thousand Words just kept on going. Now, he had a candy setup on the lead in that race. It's not happening in the Derby. Yeah, that was my big question um, about him as well, Dan, because I, I appreciate the fact that he sort of turned it around there 
and finally ran a better race. But boy, did he have all the best of it in there. I realized that he beat some good horses. I felt like he kind of took advantage. And I want to see him do it again against better horses here. The 11 Necker Island is the kind of horse that you can root for. These connections plunked down some serious money to claim this horse. $100,000, three starts back, and they've been rewarded. Third place effort in the Indiana Derby. Third place effort in the Ellis Derby. Now the blinkers come off. He's another horse. You probably take him back in the pack. You hope for a little bit of racing luck. You hope to make one run and maybe the favorite stub their toe. He is going to have to improve. 10 starts, best buyer of only 87. Yeah, he looks like a lot of horses in this race who just come into this race um, having a lot to find to get to the, you know, the bigger names and the shorter prices in here. He's going to be a huge price in this race. He's never run a race that is going to make him competitive in here, but his connection is going to take a shot. Maybe this is a silly statement I'm going to make, but Sole Volante is one of the better pure closers in this race. He's shown it in the past that when you give him pace, like in a race like the Sam F. Davis, he's going to come with a big run, and he can actually sustain that run for about three-eighths of a mile or so. I thought the idea to run him in the Belmont off a 10-day layoff was questionable, to say the least. He didn't fire that day. He has races in the past, though, that are fast enough to make him at least a fringe contender. No, I, I agree with that. Speaking of underneath horses, especially, this is probably a horse that you want to consider at a good price because you're right. He will run at the end of this race and save his Belmont stakes where I agree with you. They probably asked a little too much on, on a short rest there to come back and try that spot. Otherwise, he's been really good. And he ran deceptively well when King Guillermo beat him in the Tampa Bay Derby. He had no chance in that race. It's a shame that Art Collector was injured earlier this week and won't compete on Saturday, but the horse that came closest to him last time out in the Ellis Park Derby is this one, the 13 attachment rate, who I think is slowly improving, Mike, with each and every start. He ran really well here. He made a mid-move into the pace. He's well clear of second, and if you notice from a visual, it's really the first time in a long time he changed leads and seemed a lot more comfortable and professional on the racetrack. I think Dale Romans is slowly finding a colt that is maturing at the right time. Whether he's good enough, maybe it's a different story. No, I, I agree with all that, Dan. Um, leading into his last race, I was he, I was of the opinion that he just didn't want to go that far a mile and an eighth. I felt like he was going to really benefit from a turn back in distance. And I think he proved me wrong last time. He actually ran a much better race going nine furlongs in that spot. Um, he was a good second, a new top figure. It does feel like he's improving from race to race. He's interesting at a big price. We've seen this before from Dallas Stewart, who trains the 14 winning impression. Maybe he's got a horse coming into the Derby and not the greatest form, but he's got a late kick. And Dallas just has a knack of hitting the board in these races at big, big prices. Winning impression on paper is a reach because he just hasn't done it against the stakes company just yet. It, it does sort of seem like the only thing he has going for him at this point is his trainer, who, as you mentioned, does tend to get the most out of his horses and races like this. We'll see if he can do it again. Like Thousand Words, the 15 New York traffic is all heart. He has a lot of try in him. We saw it in the Risen Star, the Louisiana Derby, the Matt Wynn, the Haskell, where he never gave up at all. He has tactical speed. His buyer speed figures are right there with some of the major contenders in this race. This is a horse that is trending under the radar, Mike, at a big price. Yeah, I mean, I can't really disagree with any of that, Dan. I can't say that I'm this horse's biggest fan, but you know what? He just goes out there and he runs every time. And I agree with you. He has speed, but I don't think he necessarily has to have the front. So if this pace gets fast, it may not really bother this horse. But are you worried about the mile and a quarter with him? He's run very well at middle distances. He was gaining in the Haskell, but I wonder if that was because Authentic was coming back to him a little bit. I felt like it was maybe more that case that Authentic just didn't finish the race off, but I'm not going to hold that, take anything away from this horse. He was dead game in that race going nine for longs. We saw Honor AP finish a rallying second behind Thousand Words in the Shared Belief. I think John Sheriffs was merely using that race as a prep to get to this one. We saw this horse's ability. It was apparent in the Santa Anita Derby when he ran right by Authentic. He has got the right running style for this race, Mike. He can sit mid-pack off of a fast pace, and from a pedigree standpoint, you don't worry about it at all. 
I think he's a very dangerous horse with Mike Smith aboard. I agree. I think he's one of the more dangerous um, horses for the favorite to have to deal with in here. And I agree with you about his last race. I think it was a prep. Um, I'm not really sure um, that Mike Smith had a great plan in that race. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there, but he didn't give this horse the greatest trip in the world. I didn't think anyway. And I thought this horse did well to be second. And I also didn't, I don't think it's any coincidence that the best race this horse has ever run is also the only time he's been nine for a long so far. And now he gets to go longer. This horse wants distance and he's got talent. Here's Tis the Law, who already has the win at a mile and a quarter. The 109 buyer Tour de Force in the Travers. Let's watch that race right now. He sat just off of the lead. He turns into the stretch, and it is over in a heartbeat. This was the Tis the Law that racing fans were hoping to see in the Travers on the heels of his effort in the Belmont Stakes. He was able to get a very nice trip in this race. He sat off of moderate pace. But boy, you can't ask for anything more in the stretch. I mean, you really can. He just absolutely dominated this field. And he, it's exactly what he did one star prior in the Belmont as well, Dan, just with complete authority in both of those races. Um, and I say that as someone who, after his first two starts this year, he won the Holy Bull, he won the Florida Derby, um, and he was never in any danger either time. But I wasn't sold on him necessarily. I thought he was beating weak fields. He wasn't running fast races. And it just sort of felt like he was vulnerable to somebody improving through the summer um, and stepping up and beating him. As it turns out, he's the one who's really improved over the summer. His last two races make him way the horse to beat in you. Two questions for you. Number one, his only lifetime loss came at Churchill Downs. Does that bother you, or do you think that was more an issue of sloppy track, didn't have the greatest trip? Yeah, probably that. I mean, um, I appreciate, and I don't worry about him coming to Churchill for this, but I appreciate anybody who does look at it that way and says, you know what? He ran once here and he didn't run well um, at all in that race. Um, this horse is going to be a very short price. You're supposed to be looking for reasons to try to beat him. And would you be worried if that pace projector is right? If they go fast and all of a sudden tis the law, instead of sitting a nice outside cozy trip, perched off the leaders while in the clear, is all of a sudden mid-pack ninth or tenth and is going to have to pass a lot of horses. I mean, I don't worry about that. Um, I realize that he's been getting those kinds of trips um, in his recent races, but I never looked at him as a horse um, who need, I know his connections even say that he wants to be in the clear. I've never even looked at him like that. I feel like he can get any kind of a trip in the race and he will run. Completing the field is the expected pace setter, and he's a real good horse trained by Bob Baffert. His name is Authentic. Let's watch his victory in the Haskell. He turns for home, and right now it looks like it's tour de force time. He's opened up three lengths on New York traffic, who's been in a drive. And right here, I don't know whether he just loses his focus. I don't know whether he just hits the wall from a distance standpoint. I don't know whether New York traffic is just gutsy and is coming to him. Authentic is lucky to win this race. Yeah, it was very desperate there at the end. Um, and at the end of the day, even though it's the fastest race Authentic ever run, has ever run, it wasn't that impressive of a win, I didn't think. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I personally am of the belief that he's one of the more talented horses in this crop. Um, I just worry about how far he wants to go. And in a race like this where he wants the lead, to me, he is a need-the-lead horse. Um, he's going to go from the outside post with some speed to his inside. I think there's a lot working against him in here. Let's take a look at our picks for the Saturday DRF race of the day, the grade one Kentucky Derby. We looked. We tried. I just can't go past this horse in the form he's in right now, and I hate to take a short price for the folks, but, boy, Tis the law is certainly the horse to beat. We, you know, the fans don't need us to tell them that. No, I listen, I, I don't disagree with any of that. Um, I wound up, I felt like I almost had to put him on top, Dan, because as of this point, at this point in the, in the season, he's just a lot better than these horses. And we'll see if he can back up those last two races. If he does, he wins. Um, I still feel like I should have put Matt's player on top. If he's going to be a big price in here, I'll probably bet him. Um, but I'm not going against Tis the law as far as picks go. We both have the 16 honor AP in there. You like the two max player as a sleeper. I like the way Thousand Words is coming into this race. I know he's a real hard trier. He showed a lot of ability at two, and maybe he'll be overlooked a little bit in the wagering. 17, 16, two, and six for Mike. 17, 10, 16, and 18 for me. It's the grade one Kentucky Derby. We'll see if Tis the Law can do it again.